Hi guys, I'm real excited about today's video. I just purchased the Mac Mini M1 and today we're going to go over its specs and we're going to compare the benchmarks between the Mac Mini M1 and my old computer, the Mac Pro 2013 trash can with a 12 core processor, 64 gigabytes of RAM and a Razer Core X eGPU. All right, let's jump right in to the contenders for today's matchup. On the left, we have the Mac Pro Trash Can 2013, which is a 2.7 gigahertz, 12 core Intel Xeon with 64 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD, uh, NVMe drive, a special Apple NVMe drive. Um, this particular Mac Pro had an AMD Fire Pro D300 a dual graphics card and I used an eGPU with it, uh, Razer Core X eGPU running an RX 580 graphics card. The total cost for this setup was $2,100 and like I said I recently sold this Mac Pro so that is a real cost. I sold the Mac Pro unit by itself with no graphic external graphics card for $1,600. The eGPU, the casing, another $300 and the AMD RX 580 another two, $250 depending on if you can find it for a deal or a good used one. So $2,100 is the cost for that Mac Pro, possibly the most beautiful product Apple ever made in my opinion. I'm going to get a lot of slack on that, a lot of heat for that. And on the other hand, we have a $600 and $49, how much I purchased it on Amazon for, late 2020 Mac Mini with the M1 silicone chip, eight gigabytes of unified memory, a 256 gigabyte hard drive, and I actually won't be keeping this Mac Mini I ordered the same configure, same Mac Mini M1, except for I ordered one with 16 gigabytes of unified memory and 512 gigabytes of storage, uh, just because I needed those two additional things for the workload that I do. But this is the Mac Mini I'm currently using, and so it is what I'm comparing against my Mac Pro and. Those two additions I don't think will change the benchmarks that I'm running uh, on these two. So let's get right in to the benchmarks and view our Geekbench scores. The top two are the Mac Pro 2013 Geekbench 5 scores, both the CPU and the compute. The bottom two, as you can see, Mac Mini, CPU, and compute. So let's break this down. Uh, first off, this, our compute score or graphic score for the OpenCL is 44,079. Now that is using the eGPU. This score is much lower when you use the stock AMD Fire Pro D300s. Um, I never benchmarked, I did benchmark, but I forgot to save the uh, original, uh, the benchmark for the D300s. Um, so keep in mind, the reason we have a much higher OpenCL score is because we get the addition of the external graphics. Um, single core score, not the best. Uh, coming in at 744. Multi-core score 
is more online with uh, the newer Mac Mini. Still not phenomenal, but it I never really had issues with the 2013 Mac Pro in doing workloads. Uh, it did chop and stutter a little bit when it would try and go render and go through frames on Final Cut Pro, um, which is a common thing for this machine. Um, but this is the max CPU you can put in the trash can Mac Pro is the 12 core Xeon. Uh, now, let's take a look. The Mac Mini just obliterates the Mac Pro's single core score. It is a single core monster. Uh, 1735. Uh, it's insane. And this thing just, just just cuts through rendering jobs. Its single core performance is amazing. And its multi-core score uh, still beats the 12 core. It's an eight core. Um, it's gonna be mind blowing to see future Apple products that come out with more powerful M1s because if this is the starting point, this is the base point. And keep in mind, to get this performance, I only paid $649. To get less performance, we have a $2,100 Mac Pro that's seven years old. That's possibly the most impressive thing, is the value, the price that you pay for the performance you get out of the M1. Now, our OpenCL score is a lot lower. Um, one thing I am hoping, and I've heard rumors, uh, is to get eGPU support for the M1 product line. Currently, the MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, and the Mac Mini, they do not um, get support for eGPUs. Uh, it's something in forums and reading on Twitter that I've seen as a possibility for coming, uh, and so I'm excited about that because this would be perfect if I could add an eGPU. However, I've not noticed any graphical issues. I don't game a lot. Um, the main, one, the biggest, one of the bigger selling points for the Mac Mini M1 is just how optimized it is for everything Apple. So you're going to get tremendous performance on all of the Apple applications. Um, because it's just so optimized. Everything's done by Apple. Now let's dive in to our Cinebench scores, which again, like I said, this is a single core monster. Um, on the left, we have our single core um, score, 1,519 points, but even more impressive is the comparison uh, it's right up there at the top. It, is, uh, it blew through uh, the, the Cinebench single core test. And as you can see, the 24, or excuse me, the 12 core Xeon and the Mac Pro, way down there towards the bottom. Uh, over at the multi-core score, um, I swear, I didn't, I forgot to save these, the scores for the Mac Pro when I actually did them. So these are generic scores that have been recorded. I swear that it got a lower score than, than my Mac Mini on multi-core. Um, but according to this, it is a hair behind the 12 core Mac Pro. Uh, but that just all goes back to $649 versus $2,100. Uh, it just again, just the value for performance, uh, the price for performance is just amazing. And usually you pay a ton of money for Apple products that have performance. Uh, you know, you've got the Mac Pro, currently $5,000 machine, and, and then they along make along comes the $650, $699 was this retail price. Mac Mini that just offers phenomenal performance for only $650, which is why I immediately listed my 
Mac Pro for slot for sale and I pocketed some money ended up with a computer that does what I do better than the Mac Pro trash can did and finally let's look at Unigen Heaven now I'm not sure that Unigen Heaven is optimized for the Mac Mini M1. Pretty sure it's not. If you know for sure, let me know in the comments below. But again, Unigen Heaven, obviously a graphics benchmark, which we established at the Geekbench. The Mac Mini's internal graphics, not quite as strong as the external graphics. Um, that I was getting from the RX 580 uh, and I don't think that I had Unigen Heaven selected to utilize the eGPU and so I think this score would be higher more up in the frames per second 45 to 50 um, but I'm not a hundred percent sure if I had that configured correctly uh, regardless it, it definitely beats the Mac Pro beats the Mac Mini in the Unigen Heaven score. So to wrap this video up, I am super happy with the Mac Mini M1 purchase that I made. I'm happy that I sold the Mac Pro. It's astonishing how much the 2013 Mac Pro is still worth. Uh, it, it just blows my mind that that machine was able to sell for six, $1,600 and I was able to replace it for $650 um, and get a machine that for all intents and purposes uh, beats it in, in every way. I highly recommend the Mac Mini to anyone who is looking for best performance for value ratio out there. And currently, when I purchased this, Amazon is selling the M1 for $50 less than everywhere else, $649. I'll put a link to it in the description. Hopefully, it stays that way. Um, I'd like to know your guys' thoughts on the Mac Mini M1. I know there's been a lot of videos. Uh, is there any other kind of tests you want to see? Do you have a Mac Mini M1? What's your experience been with it? Tell me everything Mac Mini M1 down below in the comments. I'm interested to know everyone's thoughts on it and how excited everyone is going forward to see what Apple does with future silicone based Apple products. Again, make sure to take a minute, a second, hit that subscribe button, like this video, share it with anyone you think might like it really appreciate that it means a lot to me i'll see you next video